One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Again. One, two, three. Keep going. Five, six, seven. Keep going. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Again. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Keep going. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Out of this. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Left. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Keep going. One, two, three, five, six, seven. There it is. You are all salsa right now. This is salsa. Okay? And then you add in. Okay? That is salsa. and welcome to the Matter Series. The Matter Series was created last year in order to have students and teachers kind of express um, their thoughts and culture on certain topics. And now for my for people who speak Spanish, um, hola, mi nombre es Maria, y bienvenidos a The Matter Series. La serie de, um, se, cre se creó el año pasado para estudiantes y profesores para que vienen y se expresen sus pensamientos y cultura en ciertos temas. So, enjoy. Um, my brothers and I were in a program called Unidos at the East Somerville, um, which goes from kindergarten to eighth grade. And during that time, we all took Spanish. And I can't explain to anyone how grateful I was for the program because it shapes me as a person, it shapes my brothers as a person, it like forms my family for who we are. Um, what I try to explain to a lot of people about it is if you go somewhere and you learn a language, the language does not define the culture. You have to get to the root of the culture to really learn about something. And how I compare that is if you take swimming lessons. You can learn how to swim, you can do the crawl, you can do the breaststroke, but if someone throws you into the water and says, do a synchronized swimming routine with all these people, you're not going to be able to keep up. So if you really want to get to the root of a culture, be part of a culture, be immersed in a culture, you have to learn the roots of the culture, and then you also have to learn a very important aspects of the culture, like besides the food and the drink, but like the history and the people, and that's one of the reasons I'm most grateful for the program. Because I think what a lot of people are seeing, and a lot of people are frustrated with today, is that a lot of people grow up in this kind of bubble that they just don't see different parts of the world. They see just what their community withholds, which is not sometimes min minimally diverse. And that kind of bubble kind of like spews and continues so that people like grow up with a sense of ignorance and they don't learn about very important people in their communities. So many of those for me gave me burst that bubble and gave me a view of the world that I don't think I would have ever had any other way. Um, so I think for today, when everybody's sitting here and listening, an important thing is if you want to really learn about the culture, you have to strip down the words and forget about the sentences and really focus on what people are saying and what people are talking about with the history. donde vengo yo. La cosa no es fácil, pero siempre igual sobrevivimos. Vengo yo. De tanto luchar siempre con la nuestra, nos salimos. Vengo yo. Y aquí se habla mal, pero todo está mucho mejor. Vengo yo. Tenemos la lluvia, el frío y el calor. That's an excerpt from a song by Chukquib Town. They are from Colombia. And the song speaks about being proud of where they're from, but it also talks about struggle and it also talks about overcoming struggle. And speaking of struggle and thinking about where you're from, there's a quote from Eva Longoria, she's an actress, and she said, my mother gave me one piece of advice that stuck with me. She said, don't forget where you're from. And that's kind of the idea behind Hispanic Heritage Month. So Hispanic Heritage Month starts on September 15th and it goes until October 15th. 
And you may say, why start in the middle of a month and end the middle of the next month? Well, that's because in between that, the time of September 15th and October 15th, there are several Latin American countries that celebrate their Independence Day. Also within that time is El Dia de la Raza. So I don't know if you know this, but El Dia de la Raza was yesterday. It's also known as Day of the Race. And so a lot of Spanish-speaking countries celebrate Day of the Race or Dia de la Raza as an alternative to Columbus Day. So it's a day where um, they celebrate and recognize people, traditions, and culture of the indigenous people of the Spanish-speaking countries before they became colonized by Columbus. And I don't know if you saw on the news, but that there are, in the United States, there are a lot of states who are trying to petition and uh, start a movement for Indigenous Peoples Day instead of Columbus Day. Don't worry, we'll still get the day off. Yeah. <laughs> we, we love that. Um, so speaking of the Hispanic population, did you know that the Hispanics are now the majority minority? And that means that of all the minority groups, the Hispanics are the largest minority group. So they have a large voice and have a lot of, make a lot of contributions to our country and this is why we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. And also there are 27.3 million Latinos who are eligible to vote next month. And that's important. What's interesting is that only 48% voted in the last election. So imagine if all those Latinos got out and vote and have their voices be heard and how they could affect change. Speaking of all those Latinos, you know any famous ones? About our friend from Boston that just retired, Big Poppy. Yeah? He's from the Dominican, right? We love him. How about my girl J Lo, Jennifer Lopez, Puerto Rican, Boricua, another famous Hispanic? How many people know Romeo Santos? Ay, que guapo, no? Bachata <laughs> singer. Everybody knows Fluffy, right? Enrique Iglesias, Fluffy, yeah? So those are <laughs> famous Hispanics. So those are famous Hispanics in uh, pop culture, but we also have famous <coughs> Hispanics in who are activists, who are in politics, who are in hold major um, offices, like Sonia Sotomayor, ever hear of her? She's a his first Hispanic Supreme Court Justice. Oh, yeah. it's kind of a big deal, right? So um, Charlie Gonzalez said about Sonia Sotomayor, we made his, history when President Obama appointed Sonia Sotomayor, a proud Latina, the first Hispanic Supreme Court Justice. And as the president likes to say, every single one of them wasn't the best Latino for the job, but the best person for the job. And Sonia Sotomayor herself said that she was a product of affirmative action. She was the perfect affirmative action baby, she says. I am Puerto Rican born and raised in the South Bronx. My best test scores were not comparable to my colleagues at Princeton and Yale. Not so far that I wasn't able to succeed at those institutions. So she's representing the Latinos and being a Supreme Court Justice. Do you know America Ferreira? She's an actress. She's on a TV show right now. This speaks to being bilingual, growing up in a bilingual home. I am not Latina, I am Portuguese, but I grew up in a bilingual home, so this speaks to me. I realized how Latina I was, and then also at the same time, how not Latina enough I was. Because I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, I speak Spanish, but I don't speak perfect Spanish. Not like a native speaker. So speaking to growing up in a bilingual home, but still identifying by uh, Latina, but also American. And Sandra Cisneros, she's an author. She wrote The House on Mango Street. I don't know if you ever read that. She, uh, talking about being Latina, being uh, how it influenced her writing. She says, I am a woman, I am a Latina. Those are the things that make my writing distinctive. Those are the things that give my writing power. Um, another uh, actress, you guys have saw it, uh, Zoe Saldana. She was in the movie Colombiana. Uh, she said, I don't understand labels, so talking about labels and how we label people. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm Latina or black or anything else. I've played characters that were written for ca Caucasian females. I just want to be given the same consideration as everybody else, and so far that has been happening. So this month we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and all the contributions that they've made to the culture and the heritage uh, and traditions of the United States. Hello, uh, my name is Carlos Andres Contreras, and my parents are from Colombia and Ecuador. 
I grew up in a town called Greenwich. It's a beautiful town in the southwest tip of Connecticut, only 40 minutes outside of New York City. Filled with trees, enormous houses, and a well-funded public school system, I was blessed to grow up in a place like Greenwich. But upon reflecting on my experience as a Latino, it saddens me to say that my heritage was rarely celebrated in school. Uh, most of my friends were white, and discussions about race and ethnicity just didn't really happen. So the only place I could feel, smell, and taste my Latin culture was in our tiny public housing apartment. And the one element of this culture that has always stuck with me has been its music, salsa in particular. But I haven't always had a positive view of salsa. In fact, growing up, I hated it. Hearing salsa meant two things. One, every Saturday morning, salsa would be blaring from the radio in the kitchen sometime before 9 a.m. It was my dad giving me the alarm that it was time to wake up, eat breakfast, clean my room, and do my laundry. In other words, salsa meant it was time to do chores. The other dreadful experience I've had with salsa growing up was at family parties. I wasn't much of the dancing type when I was younger. I mean, I knew how to, but I didn't want to in front of people. So when salsa started playing, my mother would drag me out on the dance floor and make me dance a few songs. With her. <laughs> so it wasn't until I went to Boston College that my view of salsa and Latin culture in general had completely changed. At first, I didn't want to associate myself with the Latin crowd because I just wasn't used to that in Greenwich. I also didn't feel like I fit in with the mostly white affluent population because that also wasn't me. But at the end of my freshman year, I went to Boston College Showdown, a dance competition between all the dance groups at BC. There was an all-female step team, an all-male step team, a few hip-hop teams, an Irish dance group, and a Latin dance group called Fuego del Corazón, it means fire of the heart. <laughs> they were the last to perform that night, and they left me completely speechless. As I watched them dancing to music that I had grown up with, twirling, spinning, looking like they were having the time of their lives, I knew that this could be my outlet. It may be way out of my comfort zone, but it looked like so much fun. The following year, I showed up to tryouts, and out of 40 other guys to audition, I was one of three to make it. Joining Fuego gave me the opportunity to meet all types of Latinos that I hadn't before. Dominicans from the Bronx, Mexicans from Arizona, Puerto Ricans who lived in Puerto Rico. But I also loved that we had white, black, Asian students as well. People from all different walks of life who shared a love for Latin music. As a junior, I became co-captain and we ended up winning Showdown that year. <laughs> for me, there is no better feeling than hearing a crowd of thousands roaring at the performance. As I reflect on my experiences with my culture and its music, I am proud of the lessons that Salsa has taught me. For one, it's taught me responsibility. To this day, I wake up early, well, not early, on Saturdays, <laughs> listening to classic salsa songs while I clean my apartment. My roommates make fun of me for being such a neat freak and for dancing while I clean. <laughs> salsa taught me to love and the importance of doing things for other people, no matter how inconvenient for me, just because I know it would make them happy. It also taught me to be confident. As I have danced in front of thousands of people throughout my college career, I have learned to embrace those butterflies in my stomach anytime I have to perform or speak in public. Salsa has given me so many great memories, and today I hope to teach some of you a couple moves really quick, okay? Because I don't have much time, so you can make your own salsa memory. So, any volunteers? Okay, it's a very basic step. Anyone? Let's get like, let's get like 10 people. 10 people, just 10 people. Red, it does not matter. Everyone, let's get, let's get one more. It's a basic step. It is so simple. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Come on up. It's very basic. Everyone can count with us. Everyone can count with us, right? Salsa. Uh, most dances go on eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? For those of you who are musically inclined, know that too. So, um, salsa goes one, two, three, five, six, seven. Okay, so everyone count out loud with me. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, five, six, seven. Again, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Again, one, two, three, 
five, six, six seven. seven. All right, you all know how to count salsa. Nice job. <laughs> okay, so really quickly, all right, and you guys can watch and, and learn. Think of yourself doing your head. Salsa steps are very simple. You go forward with your left foot. One, two, feet together, three, back, five, six, seven. So you go forward with your left. One, two, feet together, three, back, five, six, seven. Now your arms, okay? I call them choo-choo arms. They just go like this, right here. They just do this right here. This is motion. That's it. So you're gonna go forward. One, two, feet together, three, back, five, six, seven. Again, one, two, three, back, five, six, seven. Again, one, two, three, back, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, with the arms. One, two, three, nice, five, six, seven. Okay, that is salsa. Yeah. Wait, hold on. We're gonna try it with a little music. All right, very, very slow song, but we're gonna need some help with the counting. All right, can you turn it up a little? All right, so. Everyone count with me. Five, six, seven. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Again. One, two, three. Keep going. Five, six, seven. Keep going. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Again. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Keep going. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Out of this. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Left. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Keep going. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, one, two, there it is. Three, five, six, seven. You are all salsa right now. Five, six, seven, this is salsa. Okay? And then you add in. Okay? That is salsa. So, uh, yes, performing salsa is awesome. If anyone ever wants to ever wants to learn, please just let me know. Um, yes, awesome. Can we make salsa? Can we what? Can we make we salsa? We can make salsa too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Selena Stano and I am proudly Hispanic. I am from Nicaragua. That's where my family is from. Um, when I was 13 year old is when I moved here. And um, it was very hard for me because one, I didn't speak English, and two, um, I didn't really understand why my parents wanted to make, like move from this country to other country. I was very scared. I remember um, entering school in sixth grade and I had already finished fifth, um, sixth grade, but I had to start again because I didn't speak any word. Like, the only words I knew how to say in English was hi, bye, how are you, blue, black, like colors and numbers. I knew how to count to like five and maybe like ten if I was lucky and I remembered, but um, that was it. Um, also in sixth grade, I it was very hard for me. I was bullied. Um, I was put down by three girls who followed me like every day. And yeah, it was very touchy, sorry. Um, and I think that made me who I am today, sorry. Um, and <laughs> sorry. <laughs> hey, I think many um, Hispanics and Latinos that come from other countries, um, Guatemala, um, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, all these countries, we are not, I think we are seen as like, oh yeah, these people come from other countries, but we don't really care and take the time to learn about their cultures and we don't respect them. Um, I feel like if you see something and they say, oh, I'm Hispanic or I'm Spanish, everyone says, oh, I'm Spanish, but you're not Spanish if you're from Nicaragua, if you're from El Salvador, you're Hispanic. Being Spanish is being from Spain. There is a difference I think everyone should learn because it is very important to me 
what it means to be Latino, what it means to be Hispanic. I'm very, very proud of where I come from, what I have been through um, is really what makes me what I am today. And I am very thankful to have um, such a diverse school with many different beautiful cultures that I am so lucky to learn about. And yeah, this is me and I'm very glad to meet all of you. The term Hispanic is an interesting and a complex one. From my perspective as someone who came to the US from Argentina, I understood Hispanic to mean someone who spoke Spanish. This is what it means in Latin America. As it comes from the Latin word Hispania, which means España or Spain. There are 21 countries in the world that speak Spanish as the primary language. Assuming that Spanish is the unifying factor. However, as I assimilated in the American culture, I understood that Hispanic, as used in the United States, is a word with many meanings and yet not a specific one. For example, let's consider who is Hispanic. According to the Merriam Webster Dictionary, it means coming originally from an area where Spanish is spoken especially from Latin America. But this excludes those in the United States who don't necessarily speak Spanish, as well as those in Equatorial Guinea and Spain. If we consider the general ideas about the term Hispanic beyond the confining definition in the dictionary, is someone who speaks Spanish? No, it's not as it encompasses people of Latin descent who may or may not speak Spanish. And people from other countries which do not have Spanish as its language, like Guyana, Suriname, and Belize, while exclu excluding people from Spain. Is it geographical, perhaps, referring to Central and South America? No, as it excludes people from Brazil, and it includes some people from North America and the United States. Is it an ethnic definition? Well, possibly, since the concept implies having a common culture and national tradition. Truth be told, I'm not a big fan of the word. Words have power, and I'd rather not use a word that I don't fully understand, so I choose to describe myself as Latina. I'm from Argentina, and Argentina is part of Latin America. As a result, I'm Latina. Also, I think Latino is a simple, specific term, which also includes anyone in Latin, in the Latin cultural legacy. So, what does it mean to be Latina? Easy. It means that family gatherings involve lots of food. <laughs> so much food that you could probably feed an entire army. And a meal without beef and rice and beans is just not a meal. It means, yes, absolutely. It means that these gatherings run well into the night and they are rambunctious. Oh, don't be confused, we're not arguing. We just, we're having about 15 conversations at the same time. And if you want to take part in any of them, you better be loud or you're left out. Our mothers will start preparing and planning the menu for said gatherings week in advance. And let's say that 24 hours the 24 hours leading to the celebration, it would be better for you to move to your best friend's because she's in a mood. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, she'll be all sweet and loving once the big moments arrive. And if there, there are people and food, sure enough, there will be dancing. <laughs> Talking about dancing, being Latina means singing at the top of your lungs if your favorite song is playing with complete disregard to whether you are in the supermarket, <laughs> the middle of the street, or the privacy of your, of your house. And who cares if you're out of tune? Having said that, if you want your guests to arrive at 9 p.m., better tell them to be there at 6, or nobody's <laughs> showing up until midnight. You see, we have a special clock that runs slow, very, very slow. But not all is fun and games. There is some truth to the stereotype of the fire temperament. 
So if you're a teenager and you um, arrive home and you find your mom waiting for you, hands on her hips, slowly tapping her foot, run. Run for dear life. Ask questions later. Knowingly or unknowingly, you've done something wrong and you're going to hear all about it and so will the neighbors. If you're a child and you're misbehaving and your mom sort of sweetly whispers in your ear, we'll settle accounts when we get home. Oh, you better be a little angel until you get home and pray that for some miracle she forgets what it was you were doing. Because I'm sorry to tell you, but La Chancla is alive and well. <laughs> it also means that your parents will never be pleased with anything short of your best. A report card full of A's might get you a pat in the back, but certainly you'll be grounded for eternity if you get a C. It means getting goosebumps when you hear the national an anthem of your country, experiencing extreme homesickness at random times and for no apparent reason, being an expert soccer critic, knowing all the rules of an outside, and by the way, a la Madrid. Nah. <laughs> uh, these are just some of the things that make me Latina. Things which I share in common with many others from different countries, different cultures throughout the Spanish speaking world.
<laughs> so we're not about a like dance or anything, but Hispanic Heritage Month is basically to celebrate the con the contribution of the Hispanic community in the United States. Um, people tend to be very passive about the fact that Hispanics are more than just Hispanic. So Hispanic is just like the word that generalizes everyone that talks it, that speaks Spanish. But for us, we identify ourselves as Latinos because we are more than that. We're a diverse community and we all like understand each other even if we come from different countries. Um, Latin America was also part of the slave trade route just like the United States. And so this means like we have all sorts of things basically in our blood, we're not just Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> so slavery itself is like a really negative thing but for us, we got a um, positive outcome out of it. We got to experience different cultures from other places, and then we kind of like put it into our um, community, and it makes us who we are today. We are a very diverse community. So Hispanic is just the little umbrella of who we are. And we should be recognizing our diversity as one, like this month, instead of just like Hispanics, we are Latinos, we are very, we are very diverse, and that should be what we are recognizing this month. So, if I can get all the uh, performers out here, please. Taught us, but at the same time, we also learned about you specifically. So for me, it was just wonderful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. What's the best part of being Hispanic for you? Oh, for me, <laughs> for <anyone. laughs> being Hispanic, I feel like more. Um, I kind of make it feel unique, basically, just because I. I wasn't um, raised here, I was raised in Ohio where it's mostly populated Caucasian, white. I was, um, so I was like in a classroom, I was probably the only Latina or Hispanic in like a class of like 20 people or something, so it made me feel unique. But then I came here. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. So like, I'm kind of like Maria. I was born in California, so I grew up with, um, like mostly like Latino people. So come, when I came to Massachusetts when I was seven, I didn't know like what to expect. So when I came to Somerville, I was glad to see that like Latinos were able to um, like influence many like in general like white people and like in here. And then you see like many like Hispanic like communities like small like around Somerville. So you see that we're very diverse. So we're not only like like certain areas where people like generalize it as. So we also um, have like, a positive effect on other cities and states. Yeah, yeah I was personally bullied just because I didn't speak English, sadly. But after a while, I got like, I got tired of it. I was like, I can't be treated this way. I'm just like you. I'm a person, I'm a human being, and I can't be treated like this. So I decided to speak up to my parents and tell them what was going on so they helped me. I think um, the biggest lesson I got from this was speak up and if you see that someone is being put down, you shouldn't just look down to them but if you look down, please, for it to be the reason to pick them up. Like let that be the only reason for you to look down to pick them up because everyone is equal and everybody should be treated equally. Nobody should be like felt like they're being pushed down or let down just because they are other race or other, from other nationality. So I could be wrong, so is it offensive to call someone Spanish, or is it offensive to call someone Hispanic, or and it, it sounded like the preference was to be called Latino, Latina. Is that right, or did I miss it? Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily offensive, but I think the preference is to be called Latino, not Hispanic. Not Hispanic. Okay. 
Yeah, it's all friends. Like, Hispanic is often, like, I personally think is, like, really kind of intertwined with, like, Spanish, and, like, Spanish is Spain. Spain and mm-hmm. Hispanic is kind of just, like, a term. Mm-hmm. You said that you grew up not liking salsa music, mm-hmm. and then once you saw the performance, you started to really get into it. Is that, has your preference for salsa music changed because you know that there's other things that go along with it, such as dance, or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess, like, they were used, they were dancing the same songs I grew up with, but it just me- it meant something different as I was growing up. So now I'm seeing, you know, kids my age who, all different types of nationalities dancing to it and having so much fun. It, it definitely changed my just view of the music and what it really means to, to dance to that. Uh, this is for anybody. If there was one thing that you wish that uh, non-Latina people, white people, other people might acknowledge or recognize or know that they often get wrong, is there anything that pops to mind that, yes? So there is this thing that people tend to do uh, when they notice my accent, and uh, I don't think they they do it to be mean or rude, but so instead of asking where you're from, they ask you what are you. What are you? Mm-hmm. And that really <laughs> is like, not only rude, it, it, like yeah. it seriously annoys me. Yeah, I'm a woman, I'm a human being, I'm short, I'm feisty, I'm very many things, but yeah, no, I'm Argentine will never come to mind if you ask me what are you, so just don't ask what are you, yeah. I think just like the influence that Latin culture has on American culture, I mean, it, like, the whole Western side of America used to you know, be Mexico, so like, you know, we, Mexican, uh, Hispan- uh, Latino, excuse me, culture has always been part of American culture from its very beginning um, and you know in by 2050 Latinos will be the biggest group in, in America so you know it, it's there's a heavy influence and it's always been there you just have to kind of find it um, be it the food or the music whatever it's, it's always been there you just kind of want to you know embrace it since you did mention like Mexico, like this isn't this isn't a problem for me here anymore, mm-hmm. just because everyone's so used to like the amount of like diversity like everyone comes from. But like when I was in Ohio, I like immediately was assumed like I was assumed as like Mexican, which is kind of like <laughs> you know, so like you don't yeah. feel like you you have no hatred towards Mexicans, I not have no right? Hatred, but it's just, just not it's not what I am. Like it really mm-hmm. isn't. So it's kind of like people are like assuming what I am. And it's kind of like. Kind of go. I think it can go for like everyone. Like, yeah. Like, someone can assume what you are. And mm-hmm. it's, like, no. If I could jump in, something that I can like relate to is a lot of people will call me Chinese or they'll call me assume that I'm Japanese, but I'm actually South Korean. And a lot of people go, oh, you know, Korean, and so I totally understand when people go up to you and like, oh, you're Mexican. You're like, actually, I'm from El Salvador. Or, no, I'm from Guatemala. Or, I'm from Costa Rica. And um, not everyone that looks like me is Chinese or Japanese or North or South Korean. And so I also hate the question, what are you? Where are you from? I'm like, I'm from New York. And so I think <laughs> 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 it's from No, no, but where are you from? Yeah, yeah. from New York. There's always, right. second, there's always that second. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but where? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> ¿Qué ustedes piensan como para cuál es la parte más difícil que pasa un latino cuando vive en un país desconocido? So, um, muchos de los estereotipos que uno hace hacia los latinos es que, que nosotros no hacemos nada para este país, que muchos son indocumentados y que por eso no tenemos como um, like rights in the country, derechos en, aquí en, en los um, aquí en los Estados Unidos, pero no, los latinos somos uh, trabajadores, aunque no tenemos papeles, nosotros buscamos maneras de cómo trabajar y soportar nuestra familia, hay gente que tiene como tres trabajos y solo para soportar a los hijos, y eso uh, ayuda a la economía de los Estados Unidos, so para que uno diga que, oh, los hispanos no hacen nada para este.
But he asked mm-hmm. what was what's like the most difficult part of being mm-hmm. Latino the most in America <laughs> and um, like the stigma that comes behind, you know, are you undocumented, you uh, you you must be lazy, um, taking away jobs from other people when really I mean Latinos are some of the most hard working uh, people in our communities, be it having multiple jobs, whatever it may be. Um, so that, I mean, that I could relate, like that is a tough stigma. Um, the assumption that Latinas are illegally here. Mary Jopin, as a matter of fact, you have to work twice as hard to prove your worth. It's like, it's the rule of thumb. Um, um, you know. Right, I mean. We, we might be many things, but we're not like. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Peru and I came here when I was three years old, so I am an immigrant and I was raised in a place where like being an immigrant was almost like I had to keep it a secret to myself and it's also like a lot of people don't have the privilege to like be in a place like Somerville where like almost everyone is from all these different places and some people like you like some of your close friends can be like undocumented or an immigrant and it's kind of like we're just like all of you like just because we are here undocumented it doesn't like that doesn't um what is it? Like that doesn't that's not me. Like it's my situation, but I'm more than just like an immigrant, I'm more than just an undocumented, like I'm so much more than just something. More than a label. Mm-hmm. More than just more, one I'm label. More than just illegal and more than just here. Or, or any label. Yeah, I'm not no. trying to take your job this <laughs> year. I was three when I came here. <laughs> wow. What kind of advice would you give um, young kids, kids younger than you, or kids who just immigrated to the U.S.? I would just get, say, just keep, like, if you're in school, just keep going in school. Like, don't, like, let just their situation, like, overcome you. Like, it's, like, your situation is such, like, um, like, if you are undocumented, like, that's such a hard thing to live with because it's almost like a secret. Like, you can't tell anyone because you're just afraid. And it's just like you have to just like keep going. Like you're like, if your goal is to become a citizen and like get your papers, like keep working for that goal because it's not going to be completely impossible. Like you can do it. Like stay in school. <laughs> like stay in school. Like having like free education is like the best like gift you can possibly get. And like, yeah. <laughs> I would I would also say like, just inserting yourself in as many different things as possible because if. As Latinos, if we just stick just with other Latinos, and I'm afraid that you know, you're not opening up to the other cultures that are here that you can take from them and they can take from you. So um, the advice I give is just get out of your comfort zone and you know maybe at lunch sit with people that you've never even spoken to. You know, <laughs> even if you don't know the language, just sit there and like you know embrace it. Okay. Um, um, I think adding on to that, what they say, I agree because I think if you're coming from other country, it is very hard for you to like get used to what is around you because everything is new. But I would say keep fighting for whatever your goal may be. Um, it is hard. It's not easy getting to that point that you want because when you get to that point, you want something else and something else. But hard work pays off in that that is true and um, people may say stuff about you, people may point at you and say you're this, you're that, but you know what, keep your head up and keep moving because people are always going to have comments. So, so I don't know what she says, like your ambition that gets where you want to be, where you're from, you can be like an immigrant from any country uh, versus like a person who was born here. They have, they might, ma- they might have more opportunities because they're like, they have the papers and they're from here. But if you are like ambitious and want more than them, you can get a lot farther than they do. It's just because. Of the and just adding on, like in general, this is just me talking. <coughs> but like, I've never felt more like at home than I ever had, like when I moved here, just because. Everyone, like I'm not the only one with the same situation that I was an immigrant. Like there's so many people. Like some of my closest friends are immigrants, and it's kind of crazy because I came from a place where I was kind of like 
the center of attention and it's completely different here and I think that's something super special like the fact that we can have this like matter series about Again, free salsa lesson. <laughs> <laughs>